Welcome to Jeep Sheep TV. Today we're talking about fuel injection. When the mighty YJ showed up on the Jeep scene, one of the main things that this guy brought with it was fuel injection. Now there's about three different types of fuel injection for this engine. The first one being the throttle body injection Renix powered system. And basically that's one injector in the throttle body. This one has an OBD1 controlled port injection, which is four injectors one for each of the four cylinders and then when they upgraded to the round headlighted tj they got the obd2 control fuel injection is cool for a lot of different reasons most of them being ways to more accurately control the air to fuel ratio over the previous carbureted style configuration but the question is what if you and the chrysler engineer have differing opinions on how your jeep is supposed to run in the past, adjusting air to fuel ratio may have been as easy as turning a screw, but those days are gone. Now we've got to deal with computers and all kinds of other crazy stuff. That's where the aftermarket really shines. Now I'm going to stop you right now. If you're watching this video and you have a newer Jeep that has OBD2, or you have a six cylinder, or you have an older Jeep that's running the Renix system, there might be something out there for you already. Some of the aftermarket solutions that might work for you, I'll post links to down below to make your life a little bit easier. But you've got Split Second, Unichip, and Jet. Those three companies are creating really good products. The easiest being Jet, if you have a newer vehicle, it's literally you plug it in into your wire harness between the ECU and the rest of the harness, and it just uploads a tune that they found to work best for your Jeep. So those are probably the least expensive and the easiest to install. And then Unichip is a little bit more involved, a little bit more expensive, but there's a lot more customization in there. And they make stuff for all kinds of Jeeps that aren't this one. Then you've got Split Second, which actually their chips are very DIY. And what they can do might work for this Jeep, but we're covering that in a different video, hopefully. Lastly, if you have one of those old Renix style engines there's another youtube channel you need to look at which is nick in time films and he's building all kinds of really cool tools for those engines this video we're covering specifically the obd1 controlled jeeps or anything somewhat similar to that because we have a very minimal amount of support for this engine type but what happened to the four cylinder yj well i'll tell you what's going on here you see the jeep community absolutely loves the inline six the four liter inline six jeep engine is world renowned for its reliability it's got decent power output and people just love it the aftermarket is saturated with parts for it but because of that big shadow this little four cylinder was almost completely forgotten about by a lot of the aftermarket community and on top of all of that, this Jeep uses OBD1, which to put it in short, a lot of car guys don't like working with it because it's super hard to tap into. The newer computers are way more friendly to tuning and who knows what. And so we're left in this gray area with absolutely no aftermarket support if we wanted to change the fuel injection on this Jeep. So what do we do? If I was to put it in an analogy, you wouldn't go to a foot doctor for a problem with your eye. Basically what I'm saying is Jeep guys like six cylinders and most of our knowledge base is around that six cylinder engine. So why would we turn to a Jeep guy for help with our four cylinder? What we need to be doing is we need to be looking into two different markets. One being the Ricers, the little Civics and all those other things. Those guys love four cylinders and they do all sorts of stuff with them. And the other one, believe it or not, is motorcycles. Enter Jeff. Jeff commented on a video a long time ago and he stated, I found out how to make the four cylinder fast or something like that. And me being curious, I clicked and said, tell me more. Now what I ended up with was a whole bunch of messages and phone calls and pictures and who knows what because it turns out Jeff is kind of an interesting guy and he's more known for his ability to make motorcycles really fast. In fact, he's kind of known for going really fast on a motorcycle.
157 miles an hour. Holy crap. So when he gets into these little old Jeeps, he says four cylinder, four cylinder, what's the difference? And he took a Power Commander 3 off of his motorcycle and installed it on the Jeep. The Power Commander 3 by Dynojet is a very non-invasive piggyback style tuner. And basically what it does is it reads three values only. It's going to look at your throttle position, your engine RPM, and then it's going to look at the injector pulses. How this works is you take it and you just put it right in line with your fuel injector. So the engine harness comes in and goes through this and then it comes out into your injector and it's going to be modifying that signal. After that, there's only one other pin you have to worry about, which is this, and that taps into your throttle position. This particular model was made for a Suzuki GSX whatever. It has two wheels, who cares? But what I like about it is it sits on top of the ECU. So the ECU has no idea that you're changing anything. It goes about its daily function, sending pulses to the injectors, and this takes those pulses and then modifies them before they get to the injector. You're not tricking anything. You're not really adjusting anything that the computer sees but you are adjusting how the engine's running. Now this, it takes those inputs and it has a pre-built map inside. And so it says at this RPM, I'm going to adjust the amount of fuel coming out of the injector by this percentage. And that map can be modified on the computer. It's got a USB port, so you can create whatever map you want. Now on top of all of that, it has buttons on it. So if you're going down the road and you don't like how it's running, you can adjust it on the fly, kind of. Let's talk about what Jeff did. He takes this off of his motorcycle and then installs it on his Jeep. And so whatever map it has in here for the motorcycle is now modifying that signal to his injectors. He then got a fuel pressure regulator and boosted the pressure on his fuel rail. In doing so, he changed two variables. One, the amount of pressure behind the injector. So it's open for a short amount of time and the amount of fuel that comes out is going to be a product of that injection pressure. He changed that. Then he's changing how long it's open using the PC3. And so with those two variables, slaps it all together and voila, he's got a Jeep that runs awesome. And so my thought is, what if we can try and recreate that, but along the way we need to figure out how and why it works, so then maybe we can optimize it even further. With that being said, I'm not going to do the fuel pressure regulator at this time because we're going to stick to one variable at a time. I want to know what this is doing to that Jeep. Now this wouldn't be a do-it-yourself channel if I didn't tell you how to do this yourself. So there's a couple things you're going to need to know about this modification. The first one being we chose the Dynojet PC3 because it's an older model. And because of that, I was able to get this for $100 on eBay. So the price point was pretty decent. The next one is that this was built for a motorcycle with different injectors. So you're going to need to install the correct connectors for your injectors. Uh. You could go into the wire harness and just solder in directly, but for this project, I really wanted this to be completely removable. So I bought these connectors on Amazon and I'll put a link down below so you can find them as well. After soldering these in place, you then need to tap into the throttle position sensor and run a jumper wire off of that. So you can connect here and then you just need to find a good spot for ground and I found anything on the engine to be a good spot to ground this out. I did this to the throttle body. Why even bother? Well, there's a couple trains of thought here. The first one being when they programmed the ECU on this Jeep, they had a lot of fuel economy in mind and fuel economy and performance don't always go hand in hand and so if you want this Jeep to be faster then you might have to change the parameters of the fuel injection. The other one being if you've modified the engine. Say you did a larger intake or you put a header on it. You have more air coming in and more air going out. 
Yes, the engine has the ability to compensate for these things. The ECU has a setting called closed loop where it's actually looking at the oxygen content in your exhaust and then modifying the fuel injection to keep it within a desired range. But as you'll see in a video I'll post down below, done again by Nick and Time Films, that O2 sensor has a wide range of error in it. If your modifications fall within that range, say the range is like this and the ECU is expecting you to be somewhere in the middle of that numerical range, but because of your modifications, you're now somewhere over here, the computer only sees this it doesn't see that one point in space. And so it's going to remain the same, whereas your parameters have actually changed. That's a really, really broad way of saying that. But if you're changing things and it's just slight enough that the computer can't compensate for it, you could be running at less than optimal conditions. And that's the other reason why you might wanna do something like this. Now in my case, as you've probably seen in a lot of videos, I've modified this engine quite a bit. I've ported the intake manifold. I've put on a four liter throttle body and I do have a header. So it's gonna be important for me to make sure I'm running at those optimal parameters. And that is where this PC3 is going to shine, I hope. Hey guys, this is not the end. There's gonna be so many more videos about this PC3. In fact, the next video is gonna be a little bit more in depth on how to install the PC3 in case you decide this is something you want to do. If you're unsure if you want to do this, the following videos are going to be about any and all performance gains. I'm going to do my absolute best to prove whether or not this is a worthwhile modification for your Jeep. So in the meantime, you've got some homework. Hit that subscribe button, hit like if you want to, click that bell so you're notified when this next video comes out and share with a friend so they can bask in the glory of this weird modification too. Anyway, thanks for showing up and I'll see you in the next video.